here's where Kiki go. You have a man. You have a man. Yeah. And before y'all start jumping in here in defense of her, y'all show wasn't in defense of Uzi Vert a week ago at the BT Awards. And all that man did was take a pic. Mm-hmm. All he did was take a picture. Mm-hmm. I didn't see Ice Spice bend over and slap her butt cheeks in front of, of Uzi Vert. And if she would have, what would y'all have expected JT to do? Fly what would you expect Uzi to do? W's and L's, the weekly recap show where we give a dub to the things that we like and the L's to the things that we don't. Especially the Merzik. Yeah. Dickhead. <laughs> Keep your head on the swivel. Okay. It's on you. Okay. So, first dub I got is going out to the new Blade ongoing comic from Mr. Brian Edward Hill. That name is familiar uh, to, you know, the, the squad homies listening. Uh, we reviewed uh, Black Panther Unconquered. I think it was last year, November. That we did that. Really good book. Felt like it was a setup to something greater. It was only a one shot. But it seems like it earned him a shot at doing Blade. Which, man, they tend to give characters like T'Challa and, and, and Blade and Luke Cage and stuff like that to newer-esque artists. I don't think that's Brian Hill's MO at all. I think that they've given him an established writer who's interested in doing something real with him. Mm. Um, they talk, He talked a little bit about it and what to expect from the book, you know, up and coming. It doesn't sound like the whole bloodline storyline with him and his daughter is going to be a major part of it, which, thank God. I mean, not to say that, like, Blake can't have a daughter, but, like, if there's a character that, like, I didn't really need to see have kids, it's kind of Blade. I mean, he's half a vampire, so I don't even know how that works. <laughs> I would like to just see a great Blade ongoing comic before we start delving into things about like his family or his protege that he's training. You know what I'm saying? Like, can we get a Blade comic? Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're going to get from Brian Edward Hill, man. I have total confidence in that man uh, to to bring the character to life and give us a good story. So definitely excited for that to come out. I feel like you just mentioned that recently in not the last comic book review, but the one before. You might have just mentioned it Maybe. casually. Maybe. Watch them all to see which one I said it in. Next dub I'm giving out is to the uh, Love, Death, and Robots Disney version, Kazazimoto. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yep, started watching those shorts on Disney Plus on Friday. I haven't watched them all yet, but from what I've seen, it's basically Love, Death, and Ro- Love, Death, Robots in Disney form for like a lighter audience. But still like the differing forms of animation. I like some of the stories they're being told. Black man character? Uh, well, so they're shorts. Have you uh-huh. seen Love, Death, Robots? Mm-hmm. It's like there are these animated short films that kind of Love, Death, Robots. You can sometimes you can see a a through line for mm-hmm. them, but uh, they're mostly self contained stories, short stories. Like Black Mirror, kind of, kind of, kind of. It's 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 really good. It's dope. Again, different animation styles, different stories. I I heard someone ask. Uh, before what does success for Kazazi Moto look like since this is a bunch of short stories and you know it's probably going to be left to that I guess success for me would be number one to get people to watch it and enjoy it and enjoy it enough that one or two of these shows actually get made the very first story was about a little boy these warriors these group of warriors that fight deadly spirits in the animals on the land there's a young boy who wants to join up with the troop, but they tell him he's too young. So he creates his own weapon and goes out and, and assists them on a fight. Ends up getting buried in a cave with one of the biggest monsters. And as they're crying, mourning the loss of the young man who was trying to join them, he emerges from the rubble, yada, yada, yada. He's super smart. It honestly was giving me what Wakanda kind of should have focused on a little bit more. The technology aspects of it, the community Built that up a little bit more instead of showing it being invaded constantly. But that's just me. Yeah. I definitely think there is some potential for one, maybe two. I haven't finished the series yet, so I have no idea how how many of these shows could actually be something real. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what I would think that this is for. Maybe like a a testing ground for new black content. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. We'll see. See what comes of it. Okay. 
Let's get to the filth, shall we? Oh, God. Let's talk about Kiki and Darius. Uh, it's inevitable. Let's talk about Kiki and Darius and all the millions of people that they have chosen to let into their lives mm-hmm. and dictate how they raise their children. Yeah. And how mature of them it is for them to be doing that. Mm-hmm. So Kiki Palmer goes to an Usher concert on Friday where Usher finds her and her friends in their section, comes over to serenade them. Kiki then hits a 360, shows off the dress she's wearing, very revealing, ass cheeks out or what have you. There was some other post in the midst of all that that night, but Darius responded on Twitter to the world and voiced his displeasure with his wife's outfit. Mm-hmm. Brings up the fact that she's a mother, yada, yada, shouldn't be doing that, right? So then the madness ensues, and I mean the absolute <laughs> madness. And I, and I, wagons. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with this in sections because there's a, there's enough blame for her, him, and all of us. Yeah, sure. And all of us, Agreed. right? So with Darius, you are not wrong. Nope. For wanting a woman who is associated with you, y'all living together, y'all raising a child together, to present in a certain way yeah and and i just out of respect for your relationship for the relationship that y'all share together because i have a hard time believing that she would allow you and go do something like that with other women right without saying anything to you or voicing her displeasure about it and on top of that some people some men view the person that they're in a relationship as an extension of them yeah i mean you should (laughs) i mean if, if you are going to be in in somewhat of a committed relationship with someone, especially if there's a child involved, mm-hmm. if y'all are a family, well then yeah, you know, mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. a certain point, you are a reflection of me. People are going to see you, and it may not be the millions of people who are gawking over you and Usher, but my friends, yeah. my family, the mm-hmm. people that know me and you, the mutual friends that we share, yeah, that those are the people now that I have to endure the embarrassment from, not all the people who are trailing after you, egging it on. Mm-hmm. Here's the issue. Twitter is so far from being the place where you should be handling this, fam. Did you lose her number? Did she block you when she went to the Usher concert? That was probably a sign. That's a, that's problematic. <laughs> like, what stopped you from sending an angry text, fam? Several angry texts. FaceTime her while she at the shit. Make her walk outside and talk to you. But the last thing you do is let Twitter into your relationship. Agreed. The absolute last thing you do, even the double downs, like, I mean, you, you're not wrong, bro. You're not wrong, but you're continuing to do this on a public forum. You are giving people license to get in the middle of your relationship. And that is exactly what they did. Mm-hmm. So we'll carry on. Right. Darius doubles down, you know, shouldn't be dressing like that. Yada, yada, yada. Keeps talking to people on the Internet. Gets his social media. D- disabled Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Kiki Palmer then, the next day, post a TikTok of her dancing and singing a song talking about if you act up, I'ma leave. You ain't stopping what's going on with me, sweetheart. So if you gonna act up, up I'm about to leave her. If you gonna act up, I'm about to leave her. Okay. Okay. See, now, before, here's here's what I was thinking. I'm like, Kiki Palmer is a very prominent star, celebrity, has been since she was a very young girl. She's beloved. People adore Kiki Palmer. Absolutely. And her boyfriend being a civilian or, or non-celebrity is a bit of an adjustment because the way he expects you to uphold yourself or uphold certain things about your personality in public, you may not always be able to capitulate to that because of who you are, Mm -hmm. right? There's the Kiki Palmer that's at home with you, no makeup, chilling in some sweatpants on the couch. And then there's the the Kiki Palmer, the brand, the one that has to put on a face out in public. So I understand that, right? Usher comes over, he's singing to you, whatever. What you going to do? Skirt! You know what I'm saying? You going to Jamie Foxx, Usher? No, you're not going to do that. Sure. I even gave her a little bit of bail on the dress. Like, I 
I would not let my wife get out the house with that dress on. But to get that, that that's that's just me. I'm also not going to get on Twitter and try to make her seem like less of a woman or a mother because she wore it. Uh, sure. But here, here's where Kiki, where Kiki is fucked up. Not only did you follow up the the 360 and the serenade by Usher by gawking at the man's abs, right? Where where you would have had some some plausible deniability. Hey, look, he pulled up. I wasn't trying to push him away. Obviously, I was just kind of playing into the aesthetics of the show. Mm-hmm. Fine. Lights go out. You back in private, and you're you're snapping his abs in the oh my god face. Like you have a man. You have a man. Yeah. And before y'all start jumping in here in defense of her, y'all show wasn't in defense of Uzi Vert a week ago at the BT Awards. Uh, yeah. Your show wasn't. And all that man did was take a picture. Mm-hmm. All he did was take a picture. Mm-hmm. I didn't see Ice Spice bend over and slap her butt cheeks in front of, of Uzi Vert. And if she would have, what would y'all have expected JT to do? Fly what would you expect Uzi to do? Ice Spice started hitting her Dirty Diana or Princess Diana moves in front of Uzi Vert. She jumped in the crowd. She dancing on Uzi Vert. Whose side are you on and what are you, what are you expecting them to do? I've seen a lot of this, uh, oh, well, I would have loved if my man was on the stage with Megan Thee Stallion. I would have loved if my sta- man was on the stage with Janet Jackson. I would have been clapping. I would have been cheering. You know why? Because you were a normal individual with a normal boyfriend and a normal husband. And you know his normal ass is going to get off that ex- that stage and go back to y'all normal life with you. Yep. If I'm Darius, normal Darius, and I see my celebrity wife being serenaded by Usher, it's not a guarantee she's coming home right away. <laughs> see, your husband go on the stage and get twerked on by Beyonce, he ain't going backstage. He's not going to the after party to kick it with him. They don't have each other's number in their phone. They're not going to see each other at other events without me in the future. And they're also not going to be photographed a million times by the hundreds of thousands of people here and at home. It's not the same. It's okay for your significant other to go ahead and do that and come back to you because you know they're coming back. There's no extra relationship there. They're not in the same class. It's easy for you to grasp what's happening and let it go because there's absolutely no prospect of you losing that person. Yeah. That is not what's going on with Darius and Kiki Palmer. Mm -hmm. You got to put yourself in a mindset of having a celebrity as a significant other and having them engage with other celebrities the way that you would not allow them to engage with normal individuals. Mm -hmm. If that was any other person other than Usher, that shit would have been completely inappropriate, right? So why can we not empathize with how Darius might have felt at the time about it? And then you follow it up. If you act up, I'm going to leave. If you act up, I'm going to leave. If you act up, I'm going to leave. Because the best thing for the child y'all share at the moment in y'all's household is for you to make a TikTok video about leaving your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. What immediately happens after that? Oh, not to mention, let me not slide right past this. We're selling t-shirts on your website about the breakup. That's the nastiest part in all of this. Mm Mm-hmm. Not only are you taking your child's father out of the household, but you're going to try to make some money off of it. Like that, that, that is something that's a character flaw that I didn't think that Kiki Palmer had. T-shirts that say I'm a mom and I'm Stevie Wonder to the bullshit. Yeah. Again, that, that speaks to your character. You want to break up with him, break up with him. You feel like it's, it's necessary for you to tell the public that you broke up with him. Again, you're right. Making money off the breakup is Kardashian level nasty, and making the drama not only just as public as he did, but monetizing it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that at all. I, I, I don't understand that at all. So like, you got so geeked, so so juiced off the clout that in the support that you were getting. USA Today wrote an article about this man saying experts. Say that Darius' behavior is misogynistic, sexist, and dangerous. Oh, so he said that thing that he said to his girlfriend, to every woman? No, fam, I don't even think that was the assertion. I think the assertion that him trying to control what she wears, even though they're in a relationship, 
is sexist, misogynistic, and dangerous to women. But again, how? The same, the same way that Dave Chappelle making a joke about a trans person endangers their lives. Doesn't make sense whatsoever. Same way. It's, it's, it's same not. way. It's not, but... Same yeah, thing. no, I agree. Um, he, he is definitely right for what he's feeling, but at the same time, probably shouldn't have made it public. <laughs> that was... That was the oh, fatal mistake I here. I don't understand. Like, okay, Darius aside, I, I can put it together. I don't, it's ill-advised. It was dumb. Mm-hmm. But I can put it together because, again, this is a normal individual trying to coalesce with his celebrity wife. Kiki? How many times have we heard about Kiki Palmer's breakups? How many times have we heard about people that she was dating and and how they broke up and why? How many times have we seen that from her? This would be a first for me. I say never. Why all of a sudden is it your thing to milk it to this degree? Yeah, I can see if Kiki was a regular person and her relationship for whatever reason became this huge thing, huge trending topic or whatever, and she was trying to milk it from that standpoint, but she's already a celebrity you're already a celebrity the money the fact that the that the internet jumped down darius's throat immediately let you know that you were winning public perception so all the rest of this shit means that you're trying to capitalize which feels so dirty because this is such a sad situation and you don't need it what you you like all these people on the internet supporting you and telling you yeah girl you don't need that man go find somebody else rich and famous Ain't thinking about your child. They're not thinking about your kid. No. You're not thinking about your kid. And you're being egged on by people who don't give a fuck about you, your family, or how that child's life ends up because of all of this. Mm-hmm. But please, make more TikTok videos and sell more t-shirts? You on Steve Harvey show talking about finding a man, and you'll break up with somebody over Twitter. You'll break up with the father of your children over Twitter. So you can make a, a viral TikTok and sell t-shirts on your website. That is garbage. And, it, and, and it, it, it explains why relationships are, are, are suffering so much today. Divorce rates are higher. Expectations of even being in relationships are over the moon. <laughs> Completely unrealistic. And conflict resolution is at an all-time low. People want to talk about physical violence being an impetus for 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 uh, 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 for for divorce. No, you know what it is. It's arguments, arguments over money, arguments over infidelity, arguments over history in general. You're talking about what twenty seven percent of marriages that note that physical violence is is the impetus for for the for the for the breakup. What about the other seventy three percent? What do you think that shit is over? Money, this, that, children, education, blah, yada, 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 whatever it is, it all kind of boils down to being able to resolve conflicts with the person that you signed up to be with forever. And that's marriage. Yeah. We, we, we're not even talking about just people being able to date for longer than, than six months. Mm-hmm. Y'all couldn't even stay together long enough for the child's first birthday. Mm. It's an embarrassment, man. It shows a severe lack of maturity. To, to, to think it's okay to break up your family because y'all had a spat on social media. that, that it, You deserve to be alone. I don't want to hear you being on nobody else's talk show talking about you can't find a man at all. I don't want to hear it. We see what your expectations are. We see how you handle conflicts. And we see what is a money-making opportunity for you. And conversely, Darius, if the next girl I see you with is, a, is an IG model with her ass out to here... <laughs> I'm, you deserve, you deserve whatever you moment. get from old girl. Yeah, like I don't, I don't get y'all, man. I don't get them. I don't get the people that were supporting them. Like, no, Kiki's not a hoe for dancing with Usher. Mm-hmm. Darius is not an abuser for wanting his wife to cover up or his girlfriend to cover up or a misogynist. Like, there, there's something wrong with y'all, all of y'all. Oh, what the f- I, I, I really, uh, it's, it's crazy, man. This shit is crazy. Yep. How do you ever expect to be in a relationship if you can't make it through something like that? How do you ever expect to find a person to, to, to endure life with if you are not willing to endure an argument? It's like first sign of trouble, and these people are parachuting out of these situations 
because what we were talking about earlier, self worth, mm-hmm. self worth, right? It's it's more important than everything else. If you feel bad and someone made you feel that way, it's time to cut them off. It's time to cut them off. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the validity of what it is they're saying. That's not that's that's not important. What's important is how they make you feel. Do they support you and do they make you feel good all the time? Those are the things that are important. Damn whether or not what they're saying to you is constructive, could be to, to, to improve you. Or better the relationship between the two of you? No. If you are making me uncomfortable or making me face things that I am oblivious to or just not trying to acknowledge, then you have to go. Yeah, because why not? I can move on to the next one. Fuck my ex, you can keep that nigga. Be careful. Be careful on how y'all are defining this shit. Because what I've seen a lot of coming from the women's side is, oh, well, Kiki make all the money. Darius sit at home and take care of the baby. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah? Oh, really? Oh, that's how it goes now. So then don't get out your skin the next time one of these red pill niggas tell you to sit in the corner and be quiet while the man goes out and cheats and makes all the money. <laughs> y'all, y'all do not care anything about objectivity at all. You care about supremacy. You care about winning. It's not feminism. It's supremacy for some. It's, it's not about feminism. It's about supremacy. You want to be the one on top. And I think we would all understand each other a little bit better if we talked about it a little bit more plainly like that. You don't want equality. You don't want the rules that you put on men to come back on you. You just want to be able to benefit from the reorganization of power. Mm -hmm. And that's what relationships have turned into today. Jockeying to, to gain supremacy. There is no unison. There is no symbiosis. It is straight up supremacy and domination. Women want to be in the dominant position as much as men these days, and neither one of them are trying to come together and share shit. Yep. God, watch over these children, man. All right, well, let's move on from another black baby enduring another black broken relationship. How about white women in Florida? Let's not. Let's just skip that one. No, let's White do women it. in Florida? That let's sounds dangerous. It. Let's just vote for all the CRT moms and all the don't say gay moms and... <sighs> All of y'all, let's talk about y'all and the fact that Ron DeSantis doesn't want you to have alimony anymore. <laughs> Nuts. You know what's even funnier than that? The fact that they're threatening to leave the party over it. Holy shit. So they took away your right to to govern your own body and, and decide what happens to it and what grows inside of it. Yeah, who gives a shit? You can't say gay. We can't talk about black history. All of that's fine. You will you will sit around those don't impact me. and be staunchly Republican for all those things. Oh, but we're going to make sure that if your husband divorces you, he doesn't have to give you money. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, what are we talking I about here? switch fucking parties, brother. Okay? <laughs> now, I made all those platters for those Trump 2024 uh, 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 rallies, and this is what you're going to do to me? <laughs> oh, no, sir. Ray Bob, I will vote Dem. Oh, crap, brother. Ew. It's the right way to go. Anyways, I've been feeling this way for centuries. I've been watching you benefit from all this racism and sexism and patriarchy. And now I'm finally done. Alimony is about to be the thing that flips that state blue. Hey, hey, fam. That's pure comedy. That is pure comedy. That sounds like Florida, though. We can track people multiple blocks and shoot them, kill them. We can tell you whether or not you can have a baby growing inside of you. And then if somebody knows that you have a baby growing inside of you and you decide to do something with that baby, we're going to throw you and them in jail. Can't talk about race. Can't talk about gender, sex, sexuality, any of that shit. But you know what the line is? We taking money out of white women's pockets. Oh, Lord Jesus, absolutely not. <laughs> Holy and your mama. Ew. No, sir, Rebop. I will be relocating to New York expeditiously. Sheesh. That, mm. That's just funny to me. I, that's I hilarious. That hilarious. Yeah, you you go, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> you take that alimony away. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, wee. This is more nasty business. Oh, damn. Adam 22. Oh, I was hoping we would avoid this. Mm-mm. I knew there was no way. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're going to have to get into it, brother. So now, 
let me get this straight because I've seen a lot of people talk about how his content mainly is just him and his wife having sex with other porn stars and then talking about it. Is is that a more recent thing or is that different mm, from well from, no from what I've seen? Is it a different? That podcast? wasn't the content. That Before. wasn't the only content. He he would interview like a lot of porn stars and then sometimes they talk about if if he if they had sex with them they talk about that and stuff like that. So. That was something that would happen periodically on his channel. Yeah, because it was mostly the teenagers talking about their beefs, right? A lot of the times. rappers and stuff. And it would be gangsters talking about yeah, gangster shit. Sure. Pimps talking about pimp shit. Mm-hmm. Now, his channel is basically exclusively about pimp. another man is fucking my wife. No. <laughs> and I got to talk to other people about how they feel about it. Fam, they pulled up a clip of him about like a year ago. Of both of them being interviewed, and he was like, "Yeah, so do you? Do you guys have sex with other dudes?" And he was just like, first of all, you know what? He, the first thing out of his mouth was, "I make too much money to let some linebacker plow my wife." Well, that's ironic. So then you broke. So you broke now. So you broke as shit. You got to be broke as shit because the nigga who just slayed your wife was at least six inches taller than you, and by her accounts, was at least six inches taller than you. <laughs> so. Um, did you see the clip of bro being like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't know I why do the it. fuck he wanted me to do this. I wouldn't do that. Shit, Blah, yada yada yada. But maybe you just have a, a, a mental maturity compared to me because I would be. They're like, they're playing it up. I mean, funny. they are really playing it up. She's talking about the after effects. Oh yeah, I was sore for like, you know, for <laughs> days. Yeah, that went away <laughs> relatively quickly, right? Yes, three or four days. That's not relatively Ooh. quickly at all. <laughs> He broke her ass down and made her sit down for a week almost, fam, for a work <laughs> week. That's not relatively quickly at all. No, it's not. You said the shit was reupholstered in there. Easy reupholstered, my... Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> what is this cuckoldry? Oh, I can't even call this cuckoldry. You know why? Because cucks do their dirt in private. Sure. What is all of this public cuckoldry? Correct me if I'm wrong, if we have any cucks... In the chat. But isn't part of the appeal of being a cuck the kind of pervasive secret nature around it? Doesn't it kind of take off some of the luster if you're just going around telling everyone, yeah, he fucked my wife? Then it just <laughs> becomes more of a a loserish kind of thing. Like Oh man, I I I would thought? look at this as great marketing if it wasn't for the fact that. It's but how just do you so sell this, fucking though? nasty and self-deprecating and so loserish. <laughs> I would never put myself in that position for great marketing. L- look, Fuck let's that. not let's not disrespect the cucks. If you like it, you like it. This is just not how I see typical cucks move. Uh, you know, I maybe we should ask Sneeko. We're creating <laughs> we're creating <laughs> memes and and but but you know what? Now that you bring that up. That gave Sneeko a bit more of a profile at a time that he was just recently kicked off of, of YouTube, and it gave him life back on YouTube. So if Adam22 is struggling with views, maybe he looked at that and said, let's do some of the same. Now, why he actually, why he actually, like in real life, verified on video had to Donkey Kong fuck your wife? I don't, I don't, you could have just told people that he did it. Ah, uh, well, they wouldn't make money off of it. Off of people going and watching the movie. Yeah. I think it's on her OnlyFans. And the, the, I don't even think it's come out yet. That's the worst part. I think they've still got a couple days where it actually drops. Sam. I'm sure they are going to make a lot of money from this. They were tweeting about it. It's not it. worth it. He was like, something about the wedding ring. Like, she took a, she's like, I draw the line at the wedding ring. And he was like, yeah, 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 no, no, no. Don't don't let the don't let the, 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 don't put the wedding ring on. She's like, yeah, I would never let a I would never let this wedding ring touch another man's dick. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> That's the bar. <laughs> Bars in hell. Bars past hell. Right, yeah, I I would never ever ever bring myself to do some shit like this. Yeah, let's get off the cucker tree for a minute. Let's I get don't care to the point the that this is. man is is farming out his wife's vagina for viewership. Yeah. Yeah. Like how? Fuck how? Ugh! Your wife, dog. Well, technically, he was already doing that before. This is just worse. This is much worse. And 
she wasn't his wife at that point. We talking about two sides of a different of, of the same coin, boy. Like like maybe Derry is gripping a little too tight, and and Adam is not gripping tight enough. Mm. No, Adam's okay with it because he stands to make. I don't believe he's okay with. I I previously heard him say when he was up. Oh yeah, not fair. That he makes too much money to let a linebacker drill his wife, and now all of a sudden he's all too gleeful to let the biggest biggest blackest porn star he could find. I wouldn't be surprised if they make wife. millions from this situation. But say, if the video say hasn't come out based off of what? Oh, you're talking about the, the YouTube views. Well, no, well I'll get, there's there's the views behind what's happening now. But once the video comes out, say they charge $10 for the video on the OnlyFans. 100,000 people buy it. That's a million dollars right there. That's only 100,000. I'm sure there's probably half a million people that would probably watch it before it gets leaked. Is this the new wave? Just embarrass yourself to the point that it becomes profitable? That's my point. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I had too much self-respect. Because then how do you double back on that? Okay, we made $100 million. How do you come back and make another $100 million now? You going to let somebody else fuck your wife? Is this just going to be a, a running be, thing? Like, be a come bang one, next. come all, on my wife. It'll be a gangbang next. Come one, come all, on my wife. <laughs> yep, yep, Absolutely. Um, let's talk about how dumb Whoopi Goldberg is. We'll zoom past that, and then we'll get on to my toss-up. I know why she's on The View. I don't understand why they let her speak so much. <laughs> um, Whoopi Goldberg is probably the least knowledgeable contributor on The View desk, and that's saying a lot because Joy Behar is still up there. <sighs> um, but she just doesn't know anything. She very seldom says things that are either historically or even contextually correct. Sure. Her latest snafu was a conversation about reparations where Sonny Hostin has to give her a black history lesson. Oh, wow. The Afro-Latino is giving the, the foundational black American a history lesson on her ancestors. They're having a conversation about reparations. Whoopi Goldberg interjected. We don't need reparations. We already got it. Uh -huh. What do you mean we already got it? And nobody got it. It started with 40 acres and a mule. Ugh! We didn't get that, Whoopi. <laughs> there were 4 million freed, enslaved Africans, or African Americans at that point, mm -hmm. right? 4 million. The number has been seen as high as 10,000 that actually got that land. Mm -hmm. When there was double the amount of freed slaves that got the Homestead Act and was able to take advantage of that, taking up Indian land in the West. So while we were supposed to be getting our 40 acres and a mule, and the white folks were getting their land out in the Western, Western parts of America, black folks were being strategically left out of the starting up of America. That is what it is. That's why we're old reparations. And that's just one of the things. We haven't even gotten to reconstruction or any of that shit, redlining, you know, affirmative action in, in higher education, things of that nature, right? I haven't talked about any of that. We're just starting with where it started in slavery. Mm -hmm. And and Whoopi can't even get down with that. How are we going to have a conversation about Jim Crow and Reconstruction if Whoopi don't even understand that 90% of the black people that were old land after the Civil War didn't get it? You can't even get to institutional racism with her because she can't even get the basis of what happened. I don't even think that you really need to study that long to understand that niggas didn't get their 40 acres in a goddamn mule. Here she go. Oh, well, my family got it. Well, your last name is Goldberg, so I think that had <laughs> something to do with it. Number two, I don't believe that you can track your family history back and tell me that they got that 40 acres. I think you're just talking out of the side of your neck. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe my family was the ones that was there saying, we're not going to leave until you give us what we're owed. And your ass would have been strange fruit hanging from a tree. What reality are you talking about, Whoopi Goldberg? If you don't know something, folks, this is a life lesson. Stop talking about it. No one requires you to talk about things you don't know. Just say you don't know. Oh, yeah. So simple. All right. My toss-up is on Britney Spears and Victor Webinaba <laughs> security. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's a toss up situation. Listen, man, and, and 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 I don't know why I have to explain this to certain black folks, but I guess I will. There are certain white women in our society who have an innate want and need, and they feel like they have the privilege to put their hands on folks. Mm -hmm. Right? 
doesn't always have to come from bad intentions. Mm-hmm. Doesn't always have to be, come from, you know, anything evil or anything like that, even racism. But there is an expectancy to be able to touch on you and put your hands on you. And, and, and oh, my God, this is so beautiful. And, oh, my goodness. I had a friend yesterday tell me that a white lady uh, walked up to her in the store and said, oh, my God, your, smel- your soap smells great. I said, your soap? She said, yeah, what kind of body wash is that? I said, uh-uh. Why are you that deep in my armpits, bro? <laughs> Yo. But that's how it goes. I'm sure many black women can tell you about their experience having their hair touched mm-hmm. on, you know, feeling through the texture. Oh, my God, so beautiful. Black people as a whole. Like, there's a thing about that. Britney Spears sees Victor Webinyama walking through with his security. She obviously wants to get his attention. He's not stopping, mm-hmm. which should have been a very clear sign that either he has something to do or, or he just doesn't want doesn't to talk to you. Right? And so when she doesn't get the response that she wants, this is what from what I've seen, she walks up and goes to touch him. Now, whether or not she makes contact with him, I can't see from the angle. Same. They've got an angle that's yeah, dead set that, that, on that Britney That, to Spears. me, is probably one of the craziest things is how people have so definitively defined what happened in this situation when any angle I've seen, you can't really tell. I can't even see if when the security guard swats, he hits her in the face with his own hand or if he swats her hand away and makes her hit herself. Yeah. Right? And then, so I seen a lawyer kind of talking about it, and he was like, there are laws that protect people from security from, like, erroneous or miscellaneous contact, brushing up shoulders or, you know, shaking hands, things of that nature, common, commonly accepted things that we do in society. In society. One of those commonly accepted things I don't think is running halfway across the floor, running to grab someone. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm telling my, if my security is protecting me, and here's this crazed white woman running towards me with her hand out trying to grab me. The very least she should have got is swatted away. Yeah. Now, I know the whole situation changes because it's Britney Spears. And obviously she's, she's a white a lady, woman a and she's, she's a assaulted. celebrity. Yeah. So she has multiple privileges. They're saying, they're saying that they hit her in the face. Well, from what I've seen, I can't. I can't, I can't tell. Make that. I don't know yeah. if they did this or if they did this. Either way, man, I, like, first of all, Victor Webinyama didn't do it. He pays security to protect him. That's what they did. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know if that's Britney Spears. I don't know who fuck. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I just see a white woman running up and trying to grab Wimby. Yeah. Stranger danger. Here's my question. Why is Britney Spears such a Wimby fan? I don't know. Maybe she's a basketball fan. That's not my problem. My problem is that she felt so That's... entitled that she thought that she could run up to this man and grab him to get his attention. If he wasn't already engaging with you, you got agents. You got people that can get in contact with him if you want a, 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 a autograph or something like that. Find out where the man is staying. Send a message to him and get your picture later. You're acting like a crazed fan, so you got treated like a crazed fan. No, Absolutely. I don't think she knew who Wimby was. I think she saw a tall black man and assumed... And ran after him? Shut the fuck up, Josh. I think she assumed he was somebody and was like, oh my God, well then I have to Oh my get God, Tim! Tim, it's me! I got out of rehab! <laughs> Tim Duncan? Is that you? Yeah, bro. She, she didn't know who the fuck he was. All right. That's it for me. All right. My first dub is going to Boondocks Lore. So if you remember... Wow. Yeah. If you remember, there was an episode... That was kind of similar to this whole Kiki situation uh, that included Usher talking to Tom's wife. People were saying, Darius, don't be Tom. Don't be Tom. (laughs) Yo, am I am I like am I tripping? Do I not remember how that episode went? Was Usher not like making like real overtures at Tom's wife the entire time and she was going for it and they were just treating Tom like a piece of shit? What do you mean? Don't be Tom. That whole story came from Carl Jones, who is, I believe, a writer on the Boondocks, but he's also he also plays Thugnificent Mm -hmm. and several other characters on the show. And uh, I guess the story goes, they were in a restaurant and his wife was being all super uh, upset about the R. Kelly episode that they did. So they did this R. Kelly episode talking about, you know, obviously he peed on a girl and so they're in court and all this stuff. 
And she was really upset about that because I guess she was on R. Kelly's side. Oh, boy. And so she eventually goes from being really upset to, like, being all happy and energetic. And he couldn't realize what it was or why this sudden mood change or whatever. But it turns out it was because Usher had walked into the restaurant. And that's why she was all like happy and shit and everything like that. Hey, bro, it must just it, it it must just be a woman thing that I am unable to understand. But there isn't anyone with an incurable sexual disease that would make me act like that. It gets worse. Like I can't forget that he has that. So, like, how yeah. do y'all? How do y'all? Facts, <laughs> facts. So Usher comes in and she does things during their their dinner. Uh, that basically is like trying to get Usher's attention during this time. She doesn't get it at that point. But eventually, the cast and crew, whoever is involved in this dinner, leave. And so, bro is like getting up ready to leave, looking for his wife, doesn't know where she went. Uh -uh. She apparently went up to Usher. And at this point, as everybody's about to leave, she's telling everybody to come back to talk to Usher, like, oh, Usher's cool, like, everybody come back. And so because of that situation... He made the episode? No. Oh. Aaron and, and some of the other guys were like, you know we got to put this into the oh, episode, Oh, right? that's terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. Oh, yeah. So that's where the whole... Usher and Tom thing came from. Ooh, Aaron, you might have had a secret agent on there to help get you up out of there at, at the Boondocks. <laughs> that might have been the start of your downfall. Yep. Carl Jones was like, that motherfucking Aaron Magruder is gone! <laughs> well, I, I and anybody like, who fucked with him, goddamn oh, it. Oh, even crazier. Even crazier about that. In the episode, there is a waiter mm -hmm. who is talking to Tom during Usher flirting with Sarah and the waiter eventually turns around and goes, Wouldn't let that shit happen to me, though. Wouldn't let that shit happen to me, though. <laughs> That's Carl Jones voicing that person. <laughs> Ironic, because he absolutely Literally let, let that, that shit, shit happen, happen to, to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Magruder, if you was ever were wondering about how things went so sour at the boondocks <laughs> the way that they did, that's why. That's why. Yep. Car Carl Roberts. Carl Jones. Carl Jones. Yeah. Carl Jones was absolutely the secret agent that got you up out of there. Damn. And look, I don't care what it take, but Aaron is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I might gotta play a long game on this one, but I'm getting him the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. My next dub goes to uh, artists flying a boss, flying a boss. Now that I'm realizing I've never read it out loud, I don't really know if I'm saying it right. I think it's flying a boss. Okay. Uh, they are the artists that you see all over Twitter and TikTok right now who are singing the exact same song and they're just sprinting I hate throughout the shit. entire video. We should do it. I, I'm not doing that. Let's do it. I'm not Let's doing buy that. a pizza. We'll set it on the counter, run out in the backyard, make a video. In the backyard? Mm -hmm. I'll make it to like right about there and then I'll run out of breath. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Cinnamon. So I'm giving them a dub because yes, I am also annoyed by the song and by the whole thing, but it's a rollout and it's two black artists who seemingly are getting their shot at becoming something. And hey man, who are we to just say fuck? I mean, them? if if it can work for Meg the Stallion and Beyonce, it should be able to work for them, right? You know, like yeah, like give them a shot. I'm not going to listen to their music, but somebody's going I to. I mean, Angel Reese has been all over my algorithm halfway because of the national championship game, but also because of this. Stink, stink, stinking at it. <laughs> stink, stink, stinking at it. So like, if she can get million dollar nil deals off of. Yeah. Then they let these black women have fun. Run it up, their sis. Run that shit up. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not going to keep scrolling through and seeing their little running videos, but it's working for them. Let them have it. Let them My have it. Blicky. Yikes! We should start doing TikTok videos. Uh, yikes! I mean, clearly it's the wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is a wave. 
Tell us what TikTok challenge you want us to do first. We're not doing Put TikTok challenge. Put it in the comments challenges. below. Give us a TikTok challenge. The most votes for say TikTok challenge we will do. I don't even know why I'll let you say that. Yep. I'm going to cut We're it out. We're doing it. Nope. We're doing it. Cutting it out. Put it in there. Nope. Have somebody nominated in the comments. Like the comment of the TikTok challenge you like the best, the one with the most likes. Marcus we will, will do, do the challenge. Nope. We're both doing Marcus it. Marcus will We're do both the doing it. I'm not doing it. We're doing it. Anyway, my next dub goes to none other than the second draft pick of the 2023 NFL draft. Former quarterback of the Ohio State University, C.J. Stroud. Because Fam has received his ticket, and he is the newest member of the Illuminati. Let's let's Whoa. let's clap it oh, up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He is an Illuminati now. <laughs> let's clap it up. Uh-huh. Let's clap it up. So is Drewski, apparently. Drewski, Lil Baby, James Harden, all, mm. all of them. All of them. Because he was there at, that at the Michael party. Rubin party, mm -hmm. which, first of all, I am sure if Diddy has some gay shit happening at his parties, <laughs> I am sure that there's a ton of gay shit happening somewhere in that Michael Rubin party as well. <laughs> but, hey, it don't got nothing to do with CJ Stroud. He was just there to take some photos. Michael Rubin white party. Kim Kardashian and the, and the Kardashians were there. Absolute, and, like, crazy lineup. I didn't see Ye. But I, I, I did not see it I either. See, I seen everybody, Jay Z, Beyonce. It's crazy that they can be in the same room with Kim Kardashian now that she's no longer married <laughs> to Kanye West, right? That, <laughs> that is absolutely that is baffling to me that they that can be seen fact. in the same room with her now that she's no longer married to Kanye West. Yeah. Go yep. figure. Yeah. Strange Go enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. CJ Stroud is punching his ticket. You know, Bryce Young couldn't get this ticket, but CJ Stroud said, yeah, fuck it, I'm in there. Uh, bro. Bryce Young couldn't afford that ticket. I didn't say he couldn't afford it. I said he just didn't get a ticket. And so, you know, CJ Stroud, yeah, they're like, Yeah, we're going to leave that one alone. CJ Stroud, they're I like, I think it's more likely he probably has something else to do. You know, like getting ready for the current NFL season. Nah, that ain't it. They looked yeah. at the two of them. They said, CJ Stroud. Aren't they in OTAs right now or mini camps or some shit? Oh, but don't worry. CJ took a couple days off to go this kick is what, it. This is what happened. To go kick it at Michael Rubin's wife party. This is what happened at the Illuminati initiation. They looked at the two of them, and they said, oh, that one's taller and lighter skinned. Get him on in here. I think they're the same complexion. I think they said, this one's more susceptible. <laughs> he's, nah, he's a little bit more moldable. Get that his ass it. over here. That ain't it. That other guy has a backbone. Nope, that ain't it either. <laughs> They said he is taller. For his official Illuminati and business, slightly. For his official Illuminati business, he may have to go somewhere cold, and we can't, you know. Oh damn! But they chose him. Damn. He's playing in Houston. He'll be all right. Anyways, he's playing in Houston. He'll be all right. They might not let him in. If they say you got to go to the the secret patch of Antarctica we got where nobody else can go except. For Why is that the Illuminati headquarters? I, I don't know, but there's <laughs> legitimately like a resort in the middle of Antarctica where celebrities have gone, but you don't really hear much about regular consumers being. That's because it's go on there. a secret island, not not Antarctica. I hope not. No, 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 fam. Look this up. Will Smith has gone there. There is like a <laughs> campsite. Oh, so this is an actual Illuminati thing. There's, I don't know if it's Illuminati. It sounds like Illuminati to me. But there's a campsite dead center in the middle of Antarctica because the rest of it is just like barren winter desert. Sure. And nobody would go there. And celebs go there because they can afford to. It literally just sounds like another rich person's playground in the middle of nowhere where they can go diddle little kids or something or whatever yeah. they do. Yikes. Whatever they do when they're, you know, in the private well, that puts a damper on things because I definitely have Antarctica on my bucket list. For the simple fact, because I want to visit all seven. You better continents. make you some money, dog. I don't want. I don't, better I don't make you want some that money. on my. I don't want people thinking I'm going to some secret celebrity Epstein Island sequel. I'm good anyway. But my last L is going to Rick Ross's knees. His knees. His knees. Wrong. I take it you haven't is. seen this video. Mm -mm. Rick Ross had a pool party, or somebody had a pool party. Oh, that that soft ass belly flop he did, where he couldn't really get off the the board. Well, yeah, because he <laughs> slipped. He slipped on the diving board, and he said his knees gave out. Knees, knees. 
Apparently, he needs to eat some more pears. Shout out to all the pears. Shout out to all the pears. <laughs> Shout out to all the pear. Hey, some of the best sound bites <laughs> of the last 10 years have come out of Ross, for sure. Shout out to all the pears. Shout out to all the pears. Accusations. <laughs> accusations. These are not accusations. This is false <laughs> accusations. And uh, what else? I'm going to eat it. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to eat it. Ah! Yeah, man, is a walking meme now. Never thought we'd get to a point where he's known more for the memes than his music. But... Shout out to all the pair. <laughs> Not all the pairs. Shout, Shout out, out to all, all the pair. pair. Yikes. Anyway. Wait, hold on, wait. No, now before we sound stupid, is the plural plural of pair pair? No, it's no, I think it's pairs. It's pairs. I think it is pairs. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's diving. You know, I guess he told people he was going to do a big dive, and you're the biggest boss, so whatever oh. you say got to happen in front of all the people. Oh. And so he got ready, got on a diving board, took a couple of, you know, get ready dives or jumps or whatever, and then on the last one, his knee apparently just gave out, and he just fucking kind of <laughs> fell into the pool very awkwardly. I guess it kind of looked like a, a belly flop, but that's, I don't think that's what he I was trying to get. I promised you the the the, the, the Super Splash 5000. <laughs> yeah, it was something stupid it. like that. It was like the the biggest boat Splash 5000. Damn. Not the that's not what that splash. was, bro. <laughs> that was a fail if I ever did see one. But it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious, and I thank you for that. So maybe I should give him a dub for that because he, he, he made my week. That shit was funny. Why black people be throwing pool parties and don't get in the water? I know the answer, but <laughs> come on, man. Just stay in the shallow side and then, then you know, dip. Put no, your feet bro, in or something. I'll put my feet in the pool, but you know I ain't. I'll be tired of watching motherfuckers show up to pool parties to go kick it in the in the, in the bathing, some bathing chairs and shit like that. Or or the one nigga who got into the pool with his whole fit on. Yeah, no, you can't. Like, like shoes and everything, stop. fam. Stop it. Drawers, pants, everything. everything. Yo, all right. I seem to remember yeah, I, going yeah. to uh, Cancun and nobody getting into that pool. Oh, Butts did. I got in there. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember seeing anybody ever going into Anybody the pool. that can swim got in the pool. I don't remember ever seeing anybody getting into the pool. Except Butts. <laughs> That's the point, huh? <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm just saying. Well, then we all got into the water when the when the pipes burst. Anyways, <laughs> that's another story for another day. <laughs> anyway, any other dubs, L's, thoughts, or anything like that? That's it for me, man. Give us your thoughts on our dubs and L's. Give us your dubs and L's in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Come back next week for another dubs and L's episode. Absolutely. And make sure that you go ahead and check out our previous dubs and L's videos where we discussed Jonathan Majors, uh, the article on Rolling Stone, which was absolutely nuts. And make sure you follow your boy on Spill and Threads, because I'm already there. You know what I mean? Oh, so boy. make sure you follow your boy. It's JTG, you feel me? And then on top of that, make sure you check out, uh, subscribe, and then check out our, our, our dubs and L's, because we like to do this every week, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So make sure you're here for that.